Hey everyone, TJ here, Biaf Mega Sports. Today we'll be doing episode two of how to film sports or lacrosse. Today we'll be going over Super 35 video cameras. So as a general overview, what makes shooting video on a Super 35 video camera like this one easier? Well, to begin with, they have far better ergonomics and features and specifications that make video just in general a whole bunch easier. So regarding sensor size, expect to have around the same uh, sensor size and field of view as an APS-C camera. Probably not the exact same because Super 35 sensors, if you're not familiar with that term, first of all, that's okay. Um, that's roughly the same size as an APS-C sensor. Not the exact same, but around 98 to 99% the same. Um, so don't expect like a full frame field of view or a full frame depth of field, that sort of thing. Uh, you're gonna have something very similar to something like an A6400. So beginning with pros, uh, the first one would be ergonomics. So we have like on this FS5, we have a rotatable hand grip that makes shooting handheld especially a whole much easier and just more comfortable to operate the camera from. Also, these cameras have built-in top panels, so it's a lot easier to carry your camera, that sort of thing, especially if you have a, a heavy lens attached and that sort of thing. These cameras usually have better codecs as well as more codecs to choose from. So essentially it'll allow you to get a much better looking image or a higher image quality when you're shooting videos. These cameras also have a better dynamic range. This one specifically has 14 stops when shooting in log. So that range is gonna be from your brightest whites to your darker shadows. So essentially you just have more information when you're recording just a single image. Also, these cameras have built-in XLR inputs. So if you're using any sort of professional microphone or microphone system, then those XLR inputs are gonna be fantastic because that is, of course, the industry standard as well as the most professional connection you can get for a microphone. Not to mention alongside of that, you also have the option to choose between line level and mic level, as well as mic level with 48 volts and power. So if you wanna power a shotgun microphone in the camera that doesn't have its own power source, you can do that as well. An important feature for professionals, as well as those in the broadcast, these cameras do have SDI inputs. So essentially SDI is sort of like HDMI, but just a more professional connection. So the cables actually lock in, as well as you can run them for significantly longer, I believe up to 300 feet, um, where HDMI would top out at around 50 feet. Also with the number of these cameras, in certain shooting modes, you will have the choice of a higher bit depth, so something like 10-bit, or if you're lucky, you'll have maybe 12-bit raw or something like that. So essentially, you'll just have smoother gradations when you're color grading, um, as well as more flexibility in post as well when you're doing your color correction and color grading. Another pro is that these cameras, with their larger bodies, they do have a whole bunch more buttons on the side, um, or around the entire camera, I should say. So with this one, you can see it's got buttons all over uh, the smart side of the camera. And also on the grip, there are some buttons as well to help just control the camera. So really what this just means is, is that you have to spend less time uh, diving through the menu system and that sort of thing. So that's very important for when you're on set or shooting a game, you have to be really quick with your stuff. Possibly one of the biggest pros for these cameras would be that they have built-in ND filters. So that's important if you're shooting any sort of bright exterior um, games or anything along those lines. So instead of having to deal with screwing on lenses, you simply just flick a switch on the side of the camera and a plate drops down in front of the camera and it'll give you a built-in ND filter. And then usually with these cameras, you typically have a three stage. So I believe a two, four, and a six stop ND filter that sits on a rotary wheel inside the camera. And you can select between those three or four different stages of ND because technically no ND is also a stage. This one, the FS7, or excuse me, the FS5 and the FS7 are a bit different because they also have the option to choose between a built-in variable ND filter so you can smoothly adjust the amount of ND you want in your shot, which is pretty insane. So another important feature of these cameras is battery life. So with this one, as well as all the rest of the video cameras on the market, for the most part, they all have open battery ports or battery doors. So that way you can have different battery options. So if you wanna have a larger battery than this one that comes with the camera, you can do that as well, but already you can see that battery is pretty large. And this is just a standard body. So this one will last, I believe, around two and a half hours, but the highest capacity one you can get for the specific camera, I believe will give you something like six or seven hours of record time. So that is a huge pro over mirrorless cameras where you're stuck with that closed battery port and you really have no options to change to a higher capacity battery because of the size of that confined space. Now these cameras aren't without their faults. So for most of them, they do have a very, very basic form of autofocus. So unlike their mirrorless counterparts, you're usually just gonna get a whole bunch worse autofocus than what you get with something like an A6400 um, or an A7 III, a xc 3 something along those lines. So 
from that get-go. Really with these cameras, unless you go with like a Canon C200 or C300 Mark II, you're really just gonna be relying on that manual focus, which is an important skill to have anyways. And also these cameras are significantly heavier. I believe this one without a lens is around four to five pounds. So already that is a good bit more than something like an A6400. And lastly, these cameras are significantly expensive. So expect to be, or expect to spend around 5,000, 6,000, seven, eight, uh, plus thousand dollars for a camera of this caliber or something similar to it. So uh, just in general, there's gonna be a whole bunch more expensive than their mirrorless counterparts as well. So who are these Super 35 video cameras for? Well, straight up they are for working professionals. So if you can buy one of these cameras, you know, go out and say I spent $7,000 on an FS7, and if you can make that money back um, in one year, then i say it's justified. Also, if you're kind of at the top of the range, like you own a top of the line mirrors camera, like a GH5S or an A7S2, A7 III, uh, that sort of thing, and you're kind of just fed up with the overall ergonomics of those types of cameras, um, you know, like lack of XLR inputs or the built-in ND filters, you would like a slightly heavier rig so that way you can get uh, more stable footage when you're shooting handheld. You know, anything along those lines, that is where one of these types of cameras would come into play. So each of these Super 35 video cameras has their own set of pros and cons. So it's very important that you do your own research beforehand or before making a purchase, so that way you're at least the most well-informed. So for starters, on Sony, you can choose between the FS5, which is this camera, or the FS7. They also have the FS5 Mark II and the FS7 Mark II all of which have different sort of specifications and features and benefits. If you prefer to shoot on Panasonic, there is the relatively new Panasonic EVA-01, which is also a fantastic camera. If you're a Canon shooter or you already own Canon Glass, you like how their cameras perform, then there is the C200 and the C300 Mark II, both of which have been extremely popular. Also, probably the newest camera on this list, which is the Ursa Mini G2. Possibly has the best specifications, but it can do like 12-bit raw internal. It's got like, I believe 15 stops of dynamic range, which is awesome for any sort of bright daytime exterior shot shooting you might be doing. Um, also, it can do 4K or 4.6K at 120 frames per second, as well as 300 frames per second in HD, which is awesome. And on more of the budget side of the things, there is the JVC LS300, which is a pretty interesting option because it does have a micro four thirds sensor, but it still retains that Super 35 sensor, which is great. So that's it for this quick little overview of Super 35 video cameras. They bring a lot to the table, but they also have their fair share of cons, I should say. Um, so overall, if you guys enjoyed the video or found it helpful, be sure to like it, subscribe to our channel for more content, and as always, thank you for watching.